Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today, we're going streaking. We're gonna have ourselves some fun comparing and contrasting a plethora of reels and that ever so competitive $200 price range, going all the way up to the $230 to $250-ish dollar price range with the Ballistic LT and the Abu Revo Premier. And we'll be going all the way down to the $180-ish dollar range with the Ballistic LT. And I'll be bringing in reels that I've compared in the past in that price range that either didn't fit on the table or just frankly just don't have anymore. And <laughs> it's also with that being said, when you're going over this many reels, not all the reels in the price range have all the identical or matching sizes. So for the first half of this is gonna be based on how they'll perform for your general freshwater duty. And the rest or the later part of the video will be going into how they function in terms of you know use and abuse in the saltwater environment, which is quite frankly, uh, much more of a, a testing ground than it is using it uh, in freshwater. So with all that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get the party started. And uh, I'm trying to figure out why I want to start myself. Uh, the last time I did this with the $100 price range, it started with the worst reel on the table. And I, I gave it to the Shimano Sokuro SW. I, I crowned it with the, uh, the Golden Poop uh, Award. And uh, I guess I'll start there first. And you know what? I, I, I got to give it to the Abu. I'm not gonna, it's not the Golden Turtle Award. It's, it's not an awful reel. It's just long in the tooth. It's been out for, what, four years now? So they're due for a replacement. And in fact, they've come out with some newer reels that feel better in hand and on the rod than this reel does. But it, it has the most impressive drag on the entire table. And its actual design is quite possibly the, the best. It's definitely most complicated on the table. So you have this kind of wishbone-like frame here, which keeps everything in perfect alignment. There's it's basically two bearings in the side plates that are held in by what Daiwa would call the engine plates, these pieces here. That keeps the bearings in the pocket. They bolt to the side plate. The frame has zero flex at all, and it's rock solid. Uh, my only complaint really is the anti-reverse clutch isn't of the highest grade. It's not your Chinesium import brand grade. It's a, a step above that. Uh, one of the reasons why I have this reel is a friend of mine who owns this uh, had an issue with his anti-reverse clutch failing, which is unfortunately uh, something you see quite often uh, in this design. You will not find that nearly as much in uh, the Shimano Super Stopper designs. Uh, the verdict's still out on their newest rendition, which will go in a little bit more detail, which is this guy right here. This is a made in Japan part. Same clutch that's found in the Stratic is also found in the Stella. But let's go ahead, go back to the Abu Garcia Revo Premier. It's a beautiful reel. It's, it kind of sets itself apart. It's a champagne frame. Everybody's gone to either black or pure silver. This has kind of a unique color combination. If you're into that, you know, good on you has a carbon fiber handle crank out of the box, which is, I'll tell you what, I, I'm a sucker for carbon fiber. Anything with carbon fiber on it, I love it. As long as you're not sacrificing anything. In years past, when they would bring it in, it would only be for cosmetic. Now they're putting it in load bearing areas of the reels where you're actually, you know, implying force. This actually, can't tell the difference between, it actually, it may be stiffer than what you get out of uh, the LT Daiwa reels uh, in terms of how rigid the handle is. Excellent handle, looks awesome, another plus. Then you go to the drag. The drag stack on this, regardless of this ball bearing they put at the top, which I really can't tell if it makes it a, a perceivable distance, a Fisher hit paying line. I, have, you know, I haven't honestly caught anything I really would test this drag. So this is the rotor. Cosmetic carbon fiber looks cool. No, no negative, no, no points lost there. When it comes to the bail arm, eh, I like the fact that it has the one piece bail. That's something that you'll see a lot in the higher end Shimano reels in the $200 price range. That's great there. Two ball bearings in the line roller. It's a line roller that you wouldn't want to use in the salt. It's very standard, nothing really to keep water out. And that's also, uh, a theme found throughout the reel. The only protection to keep water out is found in the drag stack, which guys, 
not much better out there. It's a bottom drag stack that, if you look here, see, this entire cassette goes into the reel. The drag stack's contained in there, and it's unique in the industry. Nobody else is doing that. I dig it. I like it. Do I need <laughs> 15 pounds of stopping power when I'm using 8 and 10 pound braid? <laughs> No, nobody does. And it goes well beyond whether or not it's better to have it, not use it, than to not have it when you need it. I, I can't picture it. 15 pounds of drag would destroy this reel. 10 pounds of drag under a fish that can actually smoke a 10-pound drag. Ugh, this reel's not long for the world if you're, if you're going that route. And while it's overbuilt and I like seeing that, I hope they incorporate into a ton of reels. And hopefully at some point they come out with, I would say a saltwater lineup, but now they have Van Stahl. So <laughs> there goes that idea. <laughs> but I hope moving forward, they do make some larger sized reels like, like this right here. Your, your 300 yard of 30 pound braid. Uh, this is dial ballistic. This is a game changing reel. This is part of, when we go into the saltwater aspect. That's why I want to separate them because it's a totally different you know ball of wax when you get to that the size of reel. Um, I hope they incorporate this in some in some larger reels that would work great for you know fishing thirty and forty pound braid, throwing three to four or five ounce plugs, that kind of stuff. Uh, whether they're going to do that, I don't know. But in terms of freshwater fishability. When you're actually, say you're using this for a drop shot, say you're twitching baits in a river for trout, it's just simply not that smooth. It's, you know, I, I, I hate making a big deal about how refined a reel is. It's seemingly uh, getting to the point where every reel will catch you fish. Every reel will hold up as long as it's from a major name brand. Even some of the OEM reels are coming out down, down the pipe or, are looking pretty promising. And it's one of those things where how refined it is is where you're really kind of pushing it in that in this two hundred dollar price range, and the Abu just falls flat. There's it, the a ninety nine dollar Daiwa BG feels better when retrieving under load than than this does, un unfortunately. And that also can be said about their top of the line, which we'll get down when we break down the Certate versus the uh, Twin Power XD, which was just discontinued unfortunately, and the top of the line Revo MGX Extreme, which is an awesome reel especially if you like red. I love the milling. I love the porting. I love all the features on it. I think it's an awesome looking reel. It all goes to hell when you turn the handle, unfortunately. Thank you, Oscar, all the way from Australia for supplying this reel. And uh, Oscar actually supplied another reel on the table. Let me move that out of the way so I don't knock my whole table over because it was in range of the spinny arms. Uh, this reel here, the Daiwa Chaldea. This is a very interesting reel. It's not a U.S. market reel. It is, however, in the price range. And it's kind of a contradiction uh, to the <laughs> Daiwa Ballistic, but it's kind of right up whatever it is that Daiwa Global Ride has been thinking for the last uh, year or so, where they, they're they literally playing musical parts. Now, one of the best reels in the table is in, is the Daiwa Ballistic. There's not too many other reels on the table. You have this, this, this these two reels are the two outliers. And the 3,000 size Saltus Back Bay is the smallest as it goes in this one. This is a 2,500 size Stratic FL. The FL, in my, in my opinion, is the best reel under 400 bucks. This is the only reel really that kind of rivals it in what I mentioned earlier, that refinement category. Uh, it may be a little more rugged and robust because of its all metal construction in the frame and side plates and that big, beautiful machined aluminum gear being held in alignment through the metal side plates and frame. It also has a carbon fiber drag, but it's in two sizes. This 10 ounce 3000 and like a 10 something ounce 4000 size, which is both pretty shallow ca capacities in comparison to the other uh, reels in the lineup. And it kind of puts it in in, in 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 alignment with some of the spin fisher models that don't go down below that 10 ounce you know size range, which for me personally, I don't have much of a use in that freshwater realm. For me, if I'm if I'm fishing a reel where I'm spooling up a spinning reel with 20 or 30 pound braid that weighs 10 to 11 ounces, I'm using a bait caster. I'm I'm not using a 10 or 11 ounce reel to to balance a rod. Uh, because I'm just getting a different rod that balances better with the lighter reel. Because I'd rather save weight as a whole 
and still have that t- tip up presentation and then have a reel that weighs 10 ounces that just becomes cumbersome. It takes away from the feel when you're twitching and all that kind of you know, finesse applications that spinning reels really do excel at. So back to the ballistic versus a Chaldea, pretty much essentially the same reel, except for you had the big, beautiful machined aluminum main gear on the left which is on the ballistic and the cast zinc found in the, what is this real? <laughs> Chaldea? Sorry. <laughs> so many damn reels. I get confused every once in a while, but the Chaldea has what appears to be uh, a little bit of upgraded rotor where you have your, your standard graphite of the ballistic And this looks to be possibly the Zion, but it may be something in between. It's a gloss coat. It's not painted. It shows the grain structure of the carbon composite, which for whatever reason, you don't get that until you hit the Certates LT in the U.S. market. They put that in there. But again, Daiwa has a billion reels. They'll they'll put a, a completely different brand name on it by taking out a ball bearing and replacing a CRBB with a standard ball bearing. That, my friends, is a Procyon. Everything else is the same, but they took out a ball bearing and replaced one with a CRBB. Like, that, uh, why? (laughs) I like the fact that there's a price point of like 150 bucks or whatever it's at, but it's like, man, make it in like the $250 or $300 price range, make it make sense. Like when you go between these two reels, really you're swapping this out and the rotor. I, I don't understand why you're doing that. I don't know. Am I getting too okay boomerish? Because when I see a million different reels using the same exact thing and the whole redundancy of it, and you look at like who's re- like the retailers, like are the retailers supposed to carry the entire product lineup? Is is that how it's supposed to work? Because unless you got a lot of store shelf space and a lot of, you know, moolah for inventory, uh, that's, that's, that's a big ask. So we're going to move away from my, my bitching and moaning and talk about the actual product lineup and how it compares to everybody else. The, the one thing I really do like about the Ballistic LT lineup in the United States is you can get them in different gear ratios. You can get that 2,500 size and a high and a low gear ratio, something you can't get out of the Stratic. Now... Right now, you have these two reels in that $200 space, which I think are the best too. This is the best overall, but if you really want to save some weight, you can't beat this. And this reel is as good and fresh as it is in salt. It's not going to take dunking, so don't go, don't think I'm saying that. It's not advanced all. But it's not going to turn into dust and crumble and fail you after you, you get exposed to some salt water. If you watched all last year, Elias was using a Daiwa Fuego LT down in Florida for tarpon. And he sent it up here. And it was a, it was a mess inside, but it, it, it stood a couple thousand fish. And if you're looking to just stick within the freshwater range, I don't think you need Max Seal. Max Seal will kind of extend that like new performance a little bit longer. But it's... It's nice to have in freshwater. I don't want to say to automatically go down to this reel here, but you may not miss it as, as, as much in freshwater as you would salt. If you're fishing saltwater, I, you know, I just don't want to see you guys having your reels, the clutches fail or anything like that. And it's not just the clutch. It's the ball bearing right here. This top ball bearing above the pinion and Daiwa reels that are not mag sealed, guys who own the BGs, that's what you hear that <laughs> when you're turning the handle, you hear that, that raspy noise. That's what you get. That's the problem and it, when it's not in line on the line roller ball bearing. So having mag seal at that lo- location does do an excellent job keeping water out. But it's with all that being said and how great these two reels are, hold my beer because the Stratic FL uh, makes pretty much everything else obsolete unless you want super lightweight, which when Shimano decides they're gonna come out with the Stratic CI4 Plus, if it's based on this platform, like if everything is the same, the only difference being the composite rotor and composite body and frame, if everything is changed over to that, there's no reel that's gonna hold a candle to it. Hands down, this will become the best reel 
on the table. Sorry, if you guys are hoping I'm going to say Dio or somebody else, if the CI4 Plus Plus comes out in 2020, it's it's a game it's game over, plain and simple. This is the best reel on the table. If you don't mind the extra, you know, what is it, 15% weight increase? When they come out with the CI4 Plus version, just if you're a retailer, it's like, don't even bother carrying other stuff. Except for maybe this guy here. Because it's got the gear ratios. 5.4 to 1 for 5.6 to 1. Rock solid. Buttery smooth. One of the... Probably the most refined feeling reel on the table. It's tough between the Stratic and the BG. This was this this was as good as the five hundred dollar and thousand or eight hundred dollar Shimano Stella of last year. The previous model Stella, anyway. The new Stella does beat it. Uh, it's it's real close between this and that's and that Stratic over there. It really is. Why they didn't make this in like a eight ounce size? I will, I will never know. I'm like the same size as that 2,500 ballistic on the other side of the table. <sighs> it's beyond me why they didn't do that. Because that would have, been, again, been a game changer. But they apparently just didn't want to do that. They have the BG out in that size. They have the, what, 1,000 size? Put a little 2,000, 2,500 size spool on it. Oh, why, why can't they just make me happy? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, now here comes another flyer out of the blue. Out of right field, you have this thing. Uh, what I call the Spheros Inshore. I, I don't know where I got that from, but it's this, it's the 2019 Spheros SW. There's already a Spheros SW out there, but it doesn't go in three and four thousand sizes, and this does not have the same waterproofing that the the the, the bigger reel does. Which, in terms of a saltwater reel, for the two hundred dollar price range, it's either Spin Fisher VI or the Spheros SW, if you need that 300 yard plus of 30 pound capacity. Once you're going way up there in capacity and drag pressure, you want a Spheros, you want the Spin Fisher. This is for like little inshore fluking and stuff like that, guys in kayaks, that sort of thing. Um, but this is a $129 Stratic FK. I, I compared the two reels in a previous video. I'll link it up there so you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, Carbon fiber drag upgrade from the Stratic FK. They did give it the rotor and bale wire out of the Altegra, which is their $160 reel that's, that looks to be still current. Uh, everything else about it is Stratic FK. Uh, they also changed the ball bearing line roller to a brass bushing, which for you guys in the salt that had the issues with the failed line roller bearings, you couldn't buy just a replacement bearing. You had to go to Shimano. This is a bushing in here. You can, it's not going to fail. You can just take it apart, lubricate it, and you'll be good to go. It's pretty much a permanent piece, never needs replacing. And uh, it's a Stratic, which a Stratic FK was a great reel. A Stratic of L is an even better reel, but a Stratic FK at 120 bucks, you can't beat that with a stick. That kind of shakes up the table a little bit if you want it all, like a metal frame reel, metal stem. And the issue for the metal stem, for you guys that fish fresh water, or colder water environments, you may not notice the difference between a metal frame and the carbon composite frame. But in super hot environments, if you're fishing heavier drags, or if you're winching against current, or just winching larger fish, or if you're just winching in general, which is something you really shouldn't have to, you shouldn't be doing with the spinning reel, but in some cases you kind of have to, you will get some stem flex, even with the higher grade carbon composites. You don't get that out of the, the aluminum frame reels. So, where do we stand now? We covered pretty much all the reels on the table. Uh, spend a little bit more time on the spin fisher briefly. From a freshwater's perspective, 10 ounce reel, I already kind of went into that, so I'm not really digging it all that much there. When you get up to this size, the 4500, I think it's one of the better reels on the market. Great capacity, great drag. As the gears kind of run in, the machine aluminum gearing to the brass pinion, excellent. Everything about the reel is spectacular. The only thing I don't like is how they went about sealing off the uh, anti-reverse clutch from the top down. It's not really a physical barrier. It's more of a, a hydrophobic seal that causes water to beat up, and it kind of prevents low-pressure water, just standing water from getting in. As the, and as the rotor spins around, you have 
the nested ridges here that have the hydrophobic coating, the nested ridges here, same as on the Shimano reels, and that kind of forces the water to be repelled and expelled outward, leaving a rubber sealed ball bearing. And it's a sealed ball bearing, not to be confused with a shielded ball bearing. And I see that all over the place in so much literature on reels. Oh, we use sealed ball bearings. No, you're using metal shielded ball bearings, not even in the same ballpark. Metal shielded ball bearings will keep grain, large grains of sand and debris out and nothing else. It'll help keep grease in place and some lubricants in place and do nothing else. Sealed ball bearings like these will keep water out to a degree, to, you know, provided temperatures and balances aren't that far off, pressure isn't too high, but they're a little bit more difficult to maintain. Once they go, or when, you can't really easily replenish the lubricants without damaging the seal and compromising uh, the, the seal itself or compromising the seal, the, the performance of the ball bearing. So keep that in mind, but these reels, these bearings are cheap. If you, if one's going or one goes, or if you're a real avid fisherman, you probably have a few of those already on hand just in case. So that way when they do go, which again, that's a sensitive location. It's not just Penn, Shimano and Daiwa has the same problem. You'll be able to just pop a new one in to replace it. The drag on this reel, carbon fiber or their HT100, it's been around forever. Uh, it lacks the the dual drag top and bottom drag stack and the slammer, which if you're fishing bait may be better because you have a lower minimum drag range on the spin fisher because it doesn't have all that additional sealing along the bottom of the drag stack that the slammer has that brings up the minimum drag pressure on the same size slammer to about two pounds, whereas this one's I think 0.3 pounds. Uh, I find that the gearing, the aluminum on brass is uh, surprisingly more refined in feel than what you get out of the brass on brass out of the slammer. I haven't, except for the long cast version of this reel, used a brass on brass spin fisher because at the 6,500 size and up, you do get brass on brass. Uh, the long cast version, super refined, feels almost Shimano level. This reel, surprisingly enough, feels about as refined as the FK Stratic and the Spheros Inshore after it saw some use which how often can you say that about pen? This guy, this is a great reel. Like this, in terms of, again, freshwater, I'm not digging it too much. For saltwater, line the boat deck with them. I mean, I can't comment on them for tuna, but for bass and blues, guys, like this is a perfect size reel for inshore. If you're only using like 30 pound braid and up, maybe, maybe 40 pound braid, Go into like 30, 40, 50 pound liters. And if blues are around, if you just need bite protection, you know, just Alberto it or swivel it to an 80 pound bite liter. Great. It's a spectacular reel. I put this on rods ranging from uh, the 11 foot 2 to 8 Daiwa Tournament Ballistic. They're one of the big red, stupid, expensive rod is. Stupid lightweight, weighs like 11 ounces and it can throw six in a head, no problem. I've used that on this, and I was throwing two ounce and three ounce lures because the rod weighs so little. Throwing a what is this, twelve ounce reel, wasn't wasn't too far out of whack. So, really, excellent excellent reel for the money. When they came out with this reel, Pen was nice enough to send me uh, all three, the live liner version, which I immediately sent down to Elias when he was down in uh, in, in the Carolinas to beat the crap Holy out of it and report back on before the reel was even uh, released. I didn't even know I was doing that, by the way. They had, they thought I was just going to do a bench tear down and all that kind of stuff that I usually do. I, the first thing I did was send it right to Elias that I knew was going to trash the thing to death. And he's not a pen fan. Fast forward a year later, he has a spin fisher of his own. And when I talk to him, he always gives, he's, he's happy to give me updates and I don't even have to ask for him. One of his favorite reels. I think it's the 2500. Spin Fisher, the smaller version than this. He loves it. And it's in his rotation. And it stays in his rotation. And if I'm not mistaken, that wasn't a freebie that he got either. He went out and bought that with his, you know, his, his own scratch. But yeah. So <laughs> I like it. He likes it. I haven't heard much in terms of any real complaints about the new spin fisher. I heard issues with the slammer, with there being a tick at the top and bottom of the oscillation cycle. And I swear. It has to do with a bad mold that they have with this traverse guide here. Whereas this one, I don't feel that tick, 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 
when the spool goes to the top and then switches to the bottom, I don't feel that at all. So in terms of a saltwater reel, that's going to really take some hard use and abuse. In the 200-ish dollar range, like 170, 190, 200 dollar range, where are you going to go? Like, if you're going to be high and dry and baby your gear, I you may be better off with like a 4,000 or a 5,000 size Stratic FL because it's going to give you a taller spool, which will facilitate slightly increased casting distance in optimal conditions because you have the taller spool, which means every time the line switches direction as it comes off, there's going to be less, more line, more inches of line come off the spool before it interacts with that spool lip and, le and fewer changes of direction, which means low, uh, lower turbulence going through the guides. It's not a huge difference. But, so you have like 4,000, 5,000 size Stratic versus something like this. But, for the salt, then you have this guy here. 6,000 size Daiwa Ballistic LT has replaced, I mean, I was using a 4,000 size uh, Saltiga as my, my inshore bit, back bay, you know, saltwater reel, 30 pound braid, throwing plugs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this thing is just so freakishly light for its size and capacity. I, I haven't wanted to use anything else. And pairing this up with that 11 foot tournament ballistic rod uh, has, was a game changer for sure. I mean, going from an 18 ounce reel to something weighs, what, 11? That's uh, almost a half a pound savings. So combine that with uh, a nine foot six Shimano Terralejo, 10 foot six Shimano Terralejo, which is one of my favorite reel rods for under 300 bucks. You name it, nine foot six black hole. Their uh, Cape Cod Nano, that same 6,000 size ballistic was just crushing it for me. But I prefer to use conventional, I'm a wacko. <laughs> I'm no longer swimming out the rocks. I'm, I'm, I'm very skittish on jetties after a couple you know, nightmare situations I had in, in the past. So I, I try to uh, take it easy as far as that's concerned. So I'm more of an open beach guy and a back bay kind of guy and fishing the rivers and, and that kind of stuff. Or that reel suits me perfectly. But when it comes to like your tuna quarry and the larger pelagics, um, I, I don't mess around anymore. I go up to the bigger boys. This is my friend's uh, t Twin Power SW. I was using Stellas and Saltigas. Um, none of these reels outside of the Spin Fisher in this price range uh, or these categories of reels go in this price range have sizes that go up to tuna grade. Uh, and I haven't seen or experienced firsthand how the Spin Fisher holds up in, in that game. Uh, but when they get up that size, they do go to uh, you know brass on brass gearing and metal rotors instead of the graphite. So they do receive some uh, upgrades before they get into that realm. And in the past, I compared the Daiwa Saltis, the black and blue version, which does go up into that size and it is in that price range, um, to the Slammer. And the Slammer won out clearly in every way, shape, and form because the, the Saltis black and blue version of this still retains that cast zinc gear, which in 2017, 2018 was already inferior to everything else. Although, cast zinc from Daiwa isn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, they do it better than anybody else. It's bigger, it's, it's you know, more well-refined teeth. And I'll tell you what, I, I hate taking away for it, but it is a lower grade material. And when you compare to what, you know, the pen's coming at in that same price range with the larger sizes being a brass on brass setup, not many reels, including going up to the Stellas, uh, are using brass on brass. There's still some of them are still you know using that forged aluminum. And uh, yeah, so uh, where else do we go? I'm trying to think here. I've been yammering now for a little while. I don't know. I don't see the timer on my camera, so I can't really tell exactly how far along we are. But uh, <sighs> the Daiwa Caldea, we touched on that. Uh, 13 fishing and their prototype series of reels. If the $300 version, which looks they have, cool. I like the color of it. The drag was pretty. They have neat. the logo for old school, but that's where it all ended. The bail wire having that weird uh, flat wire that kind of dug into the rotor, put a splash screen up showing everything. Uh, it wasn't refined at all. It felt very geary. Um, 
was pretty heavy, even though they leveraged the benefits of a composite, like a carbon composite. You didn't really get that major advantage. Um, who else is out there in this price range? Florida Fishing Products have been recently, this is again, this is right before Christmas. Uh, on Instagram, Florida Fishing has, I guess, put out a, you know, an ad with their, their products so people are inquiring about them a little bit more. Um, I asked them one of their ads, took them a day to get back to me on one of their Instagram ads, asked them what their gear material was made out of, and they said it was cast zinc, but they have a brass on brass coming in 2020. Um, I've never seen or used the real firsthand. Uh, I have seen their product offered elsewhere with different colors and cosmetics on Alibaba for between sixty and eighty dollars. I don't know if there's any true difference. Uh, I don't know personally. Again, it's just going by what the pictures show me. I don't even know if you can order them. Sometimes you'll go on Alibaba and go to inquire about a product or a pair. Like for example, a pair of titanium pliers. They're the same as the Orvises. They wanted like thirty-three dollars, you know, with a minimum order requirement of fifty. It's like, all right, I'll order 100 of them, 200 of them, and, you know, sell them for, you know, 20% profit to you guys. Just as a cheap way of saying thank you if you guys want to buy them. I'll have, like, you know, invest, you know, 1000 bucks or whatever it might be. And I'll walk away with pretty much breaking even. And, uh, no, couldn't buy them. Even though they were clear list in Alibaba, and they were discontinued by Orvis by that time. <laughs> Some other company bought them. That was, that was three years ago, and they've since not come out. So I don't know. If the DMK product on Alibaba or the other products that look similar to what they offer, which there are plenty, uh, are even orderable. I don't know. But a lot of the people that were inquiring about them are kind of parroting the same exact thing, which is also in their advertising. So some of the people that have reached out to me, I'm kind of curious of whether or not they're not you know, working with the brand or for the brand. Uh, it's equal to that of so-and-so is real and so-and-so is real and so-and-so is real at a fraction of the price. Like, really? Come on. You really think some cast zinc Alibaba real is going to be as refined as the Forge machined Digigear from Dio? I don't care what it's called, Digigear. It's just machine gearing. It's not rocket science. But, and do you really think it's better than the forged gear that Shimano's using and the refinement that comes along with that? And the reliability and the durability that these 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 two reels have kind of proven out over the years. I'm still waiting on this. The only thing that I'm kind of curious about is how this holds up over time. Still in the early on stages, but I suspect that that clutch design is going to prove reliable. Uh, I haven't had an issue with mine personally, except for the first time I opened it up. My microphone cable came off its hook, fell on the table, and I stood up and it went flying across the room. I lost the springs and I lost the cylinder, and that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I'm trying to see where we can move along to other reels Tycoon Fenor I don't know much about what they offer I've had their Megalite I've had their Ahabs I had a Premio from Fenor years ago I had an S3 or is it the S7 or 5 the gold narrow bodied one I just I haven't talked about that reel in ever and with the new reel coming out from Rob K the Visser spinning reel the body of its the frame is so narrow and it re it was reminiscent of uh the older 2003 ish four ish something like that uh tycoon Fenor s series of reels uh you guys have asked me about their the the, the primal i think it was the hundred dollar reel i haven't used it i i can't comment on it versus the daiwa bg which is a proven reel hopefully with the acquisition of pure fishing picking up van stall and uh, Fenor, uh, maybe their marketing will get together in the 21st century with everybody else. And uh, hopefully their products uh, become as popular as they were back in the day. I mean, I was a huge fan of the Fenor stuff. Their fly reels were excellent. I had their pancake reels. I had, whew, I, I had a bunch of their stuff. Big fan. But I haven't used... I worked on a, a half a dozen of their Marquesa conventionals, but... I just, I never fished them. They seem pretty good. Machined aluminum, cast aluminum, stainless gears, two-speed designs that looked like they would really last. Uh, Great-looking drags on all of them. Uh, fairly reliable, from what I understand. But I just, I'm not familiar with the rest of their product lineup, unfortunately. There's just so much stuff out there now, guys. There's so much stuff. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, best reel. Under $400, as I've said before, 
Stratic FL, Saltist, whatever this one is. <laughs> the Dookie Hauser edition. The Saltist Back Bay 3000 MD. Because it's got an M and a D. It's a doctor and then it's Doogie. You don't like it? Write your local congressman. So, yeah, you guys tell me, what are your thoughts? If you guys have made it this far, first and foremost, thank you all for your time that you spend here without you. Uh, I've said it many times before. I probably said it 150 times, 200 times. However many videos I put out, I try to make sure I thank each and every one of you for all the time you spend here because I am well aware how valuable your time is because making these videos takes a lot of time out of my schedule and more and more I have more things piling up that I'm well aware of how valuable my time is. And for you guys to sit here for a half hour, 45 minutes and listen to me yammer about some egg beaters on a table that spins around or just the stuff that I put out goofing around, that kind of stuff, it's greatly appreciated. And I understand how valuable your time truly is. And when I make these videos, I'm trying to give you the, the, mo the most information I can that you just don't find on Google. Um, you guys know that I'm not affiliated with anybody. I'm not taking freebies from manufacturers. I don't know anybody on this table, a single damn thing. Even when I'm working with shops like uh, Fisherman's Source, uh, j h Tackle, I don't necessarily owe them any good press. They would love for me to always say something's great, but if it's a piece of shit, I'm calling it a piece of shit. This time around, it's nice not to call things a piece of shit. Because then I have to always worry about who, who has a much deeper wallet than me, is going to send a legal letter <laughs> and telling me to cease and desist, which I've ignored a few of them. And thankfully, they realize, I guess, I have a First Amendment and I'm speaking from personal experience, so they can't really do anything. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I haven't been subpoenaed yet. And uh, yeah, so... You guys that show up and watch my videos all the time, I greatly appreciate it. Those of you that only show up when you're interested in a specific product, more power to you, man. I'm not trying to clickbait anybody. I'm not trying to bring anybody in here that's not going to enjoy what I'm putting out. So I hear you on that. And uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm really interested in seeing and hearing what you guys uh, have found through your adventures and experiences pertaining to reels in this category. Uh, are you a Pen fan? Are you a Shimano fan? Are you a Dio fan? Are you an Abu fan? Are you a 13 fan? Are you a Ishkabibble Chinese Alibaba special fan? Like, what, 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 do you think $200 reels are useless? Do you think that if you're, you know, spending $200 on a spinning reel, you're an elitist and uh, you're a horrible, horrible human being that shouldn't be fishing? You should be spending that money donating it to charity. <laughs> I've heard everything, guys. I've been around here doing this stuff for since 2008. And it's amazing what you see. I mean, and the YouTube side of things, oh, it gets great. You talk about spot burning and all of a sudden you're a racist. <laughs> you guys ought to follow me on Instagram. From Whenever I see insults pop up now, I'll troll that person and I'll put them all up on my Instagram. It gets kind of funny. I started doing that a couple of weeks ago. And it's, it's truly a blast. And people think I get angry or triggered over it. I just have a complete blast laughing at some fool on the internet that thinks that they're going to change somebody's mind through a comment on a YouTube video. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But I want to hear from you guys. What are your favorites? Did I leave anything out? I, I, when the table starts spinning, it's tough to focus because I'm looking to see if parts are moving and falling off and where everything's going. Because if something falls off, I got to find it after the fact when I put all these back together and it, certain things are tough to focus on. And uh, I'm also trying to focus, make sure that things are in frame and all that kind of good jazz. So, yeah, let me know. And until next time, guys, tight lines, and I shall see you. Don't fall off the table soon. <laughs>